forever. Dog. Look, man. Where? Oh, I see. Wow. My oh my. Bowen, look over there. Wow, is that Ooh, culture? Uh, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las culturistas. Ding dong, Las culturistas calling. I. Uh, you know what? I, I was gonna just come in hot with this breaking news. Yeah. Okay. I about, think I know what you're gonna talk about. About Sesame Street, but yeah. we're gonna get into it later. It might be my well, own thing. No, so funny. I actually want to say something right up top. Okay. It's time I come clean. About. So there's a story out, which is the Sesame Street. You know, the writers, the producers, they've all come out to say that Bert and Ernie are not gay. The uh, the Sesame Workshop has released a statement right. saying that they are not gay, they are best friends. But sure. the, the writer, the creator of Burton and Ernie, um, a gay man, mm -hmm. sort of said in an interview with Queer T, I believe, right. that when he was writing, when he was conceiving them, mm -hmm. of them, that he had no other way to view them but as a couple. I have hooked up with Burt consistently since yeah. I moved to New York City. Oh, no. And I am willing to take a polygraph to that effect. Don't. Burt, I will share this. His penis is shaped like a mushroom toadstool. Oh, we're really not unlike synthesizing news stories today. Truly, we are. And <laughs> I'm like I said, I'm willing to take a polygraph. I just think visibility is so important. And a lot of people have been asking me what I would say to Ernie. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would say. I don't know him. But this is, but this is. I don't know what the nature of their relationship is. I just uh, know okay. what my nature of with my relationship with Bert was. Yes, he's my lover. And uh -huh. it's been like that for 10 years. Okay. So I'm sorry, but I, it's it's really about truth and people understanding the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am the Stormy Daniels of the Sesame Street universe. Wow. And I will burn this to the ground. Actually, this is the thing about, this is the, the thing that I have an issue with, with the Sesame, Work, with Sesame Workshop statement mm -hmm. is that they end it by saying, mm -hmm. they share, they identify as male, they share many qualities with hum, as humans right. that humans have. Um, but they are puppets and therefore do not have a sexual orientation. But then, meanwhile, yet, you have puppets autistic... Puppets can be autistic. Yeah. Puppets can be bitches in dumpsters. They can puppets be... Puppets can like, be, you know, birds can be walking around. They can it's be like, like Puerto Rican, like whatever. Like there's, you, they, they have race, they have mental They can have every spectrums. quality except not a sexual orientation. Interesting. And I'm here to say I'm so sorry. I, 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 that is might, actually erasure. It might hurt a lot of people, but it's erasure. It's erasure. <laughs> and you know that we love to come out and scream erasure. Yes, yes. And we will continue to do that. And I, as the Stormy Daniels of the Sesame Street universe, mm -hmm, will continue mm -hmm. to blow the whistle on this. Yeah. And you will see me on television and on red carpets with my lawyer, presidential hopeful, oh Michael Avenatti. No, no. Who could break my arm. Stop it. Okay, sexually. So I'm into it. All right. Um, we don't have the time to unpack all of that. I'm sexually into Avenatti. Um, yeah, okay. And now, front runner for title of ep. Uh, so what's that? I don't know how our guest is going to feel about the title of this ep being "I'm sexually, sexually into, into Michael, Michael Avenatti, Avenatti," but we'll find out. I would let's 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 try to center on on his. You're right. Experience. I'm sorry. I'm just so emotional about today. So emotional. Okay, our guest is a really, really, really great. This is a this big is a get. Funny man. Big get. Funny man. And like truly, legs and dairy, legendary. Yeah. Do you I, know what I'm saying? Which I'm very gag. Would, would you go to big terrific shows back in the day? No. Oh my god. Okay. So him, Gabe Liebman, Jenny Slate. Like. Oh, okay. One the triumvirate. Like, truly, like. In my conception, I'm a little zygo. Like the first great Brooklyn show that like ca like came to my mind, like that like mm -hmm. cro that like came on my dumb little radar back when I was like twenty in this stupid town. I've but it was I very much enjoyed the comedy lineup special. Oh, and the comedy lineup special on Netflix. Quarter hour must. baby, the quarter hour space is opening up. He's the quarter hour space is really <laughs> opening up. Uh, but in the digital space, in but the digital space, uh, he, I have to talk to him about some stuff that he covers. That you're you're I'm you're so, blessed then because he's here. He's here. We have to talk to him. Yeah, we got to talk to him about the school, um, yeah. the school that he talks. Oh about. yeah 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 yeah. Um, and <laughs> I always think about that. That school. And this that was brave to cover all this. Thank God he's here. Thank God he's because we can, we can talk to him about it. Uh, about and he's it. a writer for uh, the amazing show Big Mouth. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, season two drops. October fifth, the same day as a star is born, <laughs> which is, is really kind of gonna 
be a tug of war for my attention sure, on that sure, day. Sure. You're like, oh, do I go for Bradley and Gaga or Mulaney and 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 Kroll? <laughs> Truly, the 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 uh, Bradley and Gaga of the of the of the ne- Netflix digital space digital space. Yeah, um, he's so funny. He's so great. He's just really the the, the best person. Cutie, um, cutie. Everyone, welcome into your ears, Max, Max Silvestri. Silvestri. Wow. wow, thank you guys. That was a really really wonderful intro. Uh, you know, that's we we. Here's the thing. Oh, and, and just knew... to make it clear, I like to I like my arm being broken sexually. <laughs> yes. So if that is helpful <laughs> right. for but the by title. Michael Avenatti? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. He's the type I would like, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you were to swing that way, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would if... be a, you'd be an Avenatti gay. Oh, it's it has, I don't think of it as like Oh, okay. Yeah, being gendered or any kind of right. like totally, binary. Totally. It's more just like I would whoever is going to break my arm sexually needs yeah. to be strong enough to do it. Yes. He does seem like he could. You he know? seems like an arm breaker. Like the he Sesame Street, like it doesn't matter what's going on below the waist. <laughs> it's just about that he physically has the the power to break the bone and muscle. I mean, there's so much sinew. It's like mm-hmm. difficult. There's I a mean, reason we don't just right. fall and break it all the time. There's so much. Oh, you're talking about your own sinew or his? Yeah, my and all of oh, ours. Yeah, for, all and of if ours. you've ever just like asked a friend, like break my arm, sure, like even sure, if they're sure. trying. He looks hard. like he could. He guess. And yes. maybe that's what we need in someone that's going to head up against Trump in the yeah. 2020. I know it's too early to talk about 2020 because, guys, the midterms are right around the corner. <laughs> oh, my God. But 50 days. Uh, 50 as days of as recording. of now. Less when this one comes I'm out. I'm doing a weird deregister campaign right <gasps> now, which, oh, like, oh, among Max, people in my no. community, I'm just like, the roles are too big. Stop it. You Perfect. know, unless you've really thought it through, get off those roles. I don't yeah. want this mail. Yeah. It's yeah. more about the environment. Sure. Okay. So, and so where, where are you doing this stuff? Florida? Like, what, what, like Texas? Oh, that'd be smart to actually do it on the ground. Yeah, I'm more just ground. like, I'm reaching out to people over DM and being like, are you registered to vote? Please oh. unregister. Here's a link to Unregist- do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you, if you, and, if, and then, if, and it's like a sort of like a, not a pyramid thing, but it's like you tell them to go to five people. Exactly. They go to yeah, five, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the truth five. is, is like, if you know um, very little information about someone, you can just deregister them. <laughs> On your own. That's I mean, true. you know, like if you like look at someone's mail, you have most of what you need. Sure. If you listen to podcasts, I probably know all your security words. Oh, absolutely. Anyone yeah. out there could deregister us. Oh, yeah. no, I'm certain that you could steal my identity. I'm certain, certain of it. You, oh, you know what truly happened the other day? I went to go cast my vote for Miss Cynthia Nixon. Miss Didn't Cynthia. go our way. Didn't Sorry. go our way. Um, by the way, that's what my mom texted me the day after the 2016 election. She said, well, that didn't go our way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no one oh. asked for my ID. Really? No. I know. They've been, that's not, 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 not I also heard that a lot from people in it's a fame the thing, general. Right? It's a fame It's a fame It's a fame People, thing. In, I people in, in your district are like, hello, South I think uh, R. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, um, yeah, we know who you are. <laughs> oh my God. Um, the people volunteering, I'm sure. <laughs> you're right. Um, but the thing is, I was like, this is crazy. And then a dark thought ran through my mind. Yeah. I was like, I could go to some, I could just be like, oh, my name is, um, and just know my friends that aren't like going and right. kind of scoop right in there yeah. and vote twice. You have all your various wigs and costumes on like a, <laughs> like a, you know, like a thing you're pulling in, yep. like a big chest on wheels or whatever. And you're yeah. like, I got to run outside for a second. I'm Belinda Bagoo. Yeah, yeah. Belinda Bagoo. Yeah. A lot of my wigs are like Belinda Bagoo esque <laughs> wigs. Yeah, They're very yeah. kind of red and curly. And people you know? are like, oh, wow, Belinda Magoo. You Belinda haven't Magoo. voted in so long. We're so happy yeah. to have you back. <laughs> Here you are, registered in South Slope. <laughs> I am technically committing voter fraud. I will say. How is that? I I will just confess it on the pod, on the record. Uh-huh. I and I will just change this, but I'm registered in Colorado. Uh yes. But yeah. I pay my taxes here. It's it's voter fraud. California voter? <laughs> I am a California voter, which is you know, there's a rule following part of me that was just like, well, I want to get a. Yeah. It, well, actually, it's because I wanted to get a marijuana cart. So I right. had to go. change my DMV stuff. So yeah. then I was like, well, in, in New York, it's just as useless in LA. But um, my partner of many years, like, she has family in San Diego that is uh-huh. like, that, and I'm like, oh, we should, we're there a lot. We're there enough that it would not be fraudulent. Yeah, like, yeah, it, right. it, like, it's her parents spend half the year there and we're there a lot. And it's just like, I, I, I should do that's just as much as being like oh I never unregistered from right. my college town or whatever like yeah. mm. just to actually have a vote that matters that's so the point the is if you are registered get off those rolls guy <laughs> it's, it takes five seconds truly truly unregistered deregister, de-register. maybe that's the title of that de-register, de-register. to vote um, I know someone that just re-registered in Michigan oh and that's all I'll say about that I think I know who this is yeah and I think honestly you should. smart strategic move but he doesn't live there but does very much not live there all right I mean, but you know, we have to fight fire with fire. In fact, that's what Michael Avenatti said. That might be his <laughs> campaign slogan. No joke. Oh, fight God. fire with fire. Otherwise, oh. they're going to break your arm and you're not going <laughs> to like it as good, much in as not a good way. you and I will. Yeah. <laughs> I always w- say that. I saw Darren Chris in his suit last night on the Emmys. <sighs> 
I said, I'd let that man break my arm. God, you know what? Give him an extra Emmy for the um, performative heterosexuality. He I think he's really... I think he's the real deal. I had a barbecue at my house, and I, I'm a fan of his work, and I loved American Horror Did Story. Did he roll through? Um, he, he, a friend that came invited him. It was the day after he'd gotten the Emmy nomination. Oh, I think they, they'd had a bit of a party the night before, uh, like a okay. surprise thing for him. Sure. Yes. But because it was a party, mm-hmm. they didn't eat the cake <laughs> that was made. Uh-huh. For his uh, that his like wife um, yes. got for him, uh-huh. and so just in this last minute invite to come to this barbecue at my house, they brought the cake. The cake, and they 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 were being silly about it and embarrassed, but ultimately did put down with like a handful of homemade cobblers a cake that said like <laughs> congratulations on your Emmy nod, Darren. At, like wow. at your at, your at house? my barbecue, <laughs> yes, it wasn't like my birthday or anything, but it was just like this beautiful like matte chocolate. It was like a gorgeous cake, but next to like. You know, <laughs> stuff that friends and I had oh, cooked and wow. it was appreciated, but also like they suddenly got embarrassed and were like, should we wipe the words off? And I was like, that I feels, love it. You don't have to do that. <gasps> but then I, they, they did. They felt so bad because oh, they didn't want to be. It was just like we have a full cake yeah, and we're yeah. going to a That's barbecue. That's how you know who he is handed. straight. It would have been way more queer and radical sure. to just lay that cake on the table and be like, this is my right. party now. I take it back. I take it back. No, he's I just, a sweet. He's, he's very he's, sweet. He seems he very seems sweet. like a sweetie. Um, I loved his suit. And I was like, but he was very, he was a fly suit. A straight man who wears that kind of suit is too much of an ally, and there might be such a thing. But the suit of the night was your friend John Mulaney. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Emmy really, winner. Emmy winner John Mulaney. Mm. Can really we believe? Unbelievable that light blue suit. That, light that blue was suit. A, and that was that was I always say if I ever go to the Emmys, I'm wearing a color. Yeah. I'm wearing canary yeah. yellow. Mm. And I think it's hard for like kind of like boringish white guys to pull off. Yeah, color without seeming, uh, like you know, ironic. Like, yeah, ironic or like, oh, it, like he looked he good. Looked I great. thought yeah, it he looked, looked classy, great. not yes. just like transgressive or whatever. Totally. Well, I feel like in the past few years, he has upped the glam factor in a major way. Someone's styling him, kid gorgeous, kid gorgeous. Is yeah. that Kara? Ma- is that the doing of Kara Maslin? It might be Kara Maslin. Kara Maslin oh, love Kara Maslin. Kara Maslin. Kara Maslin. She, she got a, a shout out. Kara Maslin's and what our, I loved about our sister, our sister. Our, what I loved about his speech is that he thanked the assistants. Yeah, and they and that got an applause break love it huge deal um max we have to talk about this school first of all everyone should listen to everyone should listen watch you could listen to it oh, you could watch it it's a it's an audio visual experience i think netflix stuff special. they don't they should advertise more just put it on while you drive like, <laughs> as long as you don't lock the screen it's like <laughs> it's really it's there's the some act outs but totally. you'll get it you're not staring at the tv at home it's an album right. babe it's yeah, yeah. it's noise you know yeah. you have your car ipad <laughs> you put in your headphones you throw it on the passenger uh-huh, sites uh-huh. you know yeah yeah floor yeah well well Footwell? The Sorry, footwell. We'll, we'll call it the footwell. Yeah, that yeah, that yeah. feels right. Yeah. Right. A lot of ways to enjoy this one. Totally. Anyway, this, sponsor, uh, this podcast is sponsored by Footwell. Um, <laughs> they send you socks perfectly molded to your feet once a month. Footwell, check them out. Use code okay, Kara Maslin. <laughs> Ma- <laughs> Use code Kara, Kara Maslin. <laughs> wow. Wow, she's going to fucking flip. She's going to love that. She's going to text us immediately. <laughs> I See, Max can read ad copy better than we can. <laughs> yeah, honestly, you want to do he, ours? But he fucking improvised it. I, I mean, I you know used to be a, a, a bad TV host. You know, I, I can, I can <laughs> What read. did you host on the television? Oh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a cooking show. I had three food shows that <gasps> all failed after one season. Okay, Very what? quickly. Th- let, 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 let's let's run through them because because I I need to, I need a little because I'm fascinated. I by need this. a refresher. Um, and let's let's first acknowledge that this is brave for me to acknowledge this brave, in a high profile. We I've been be. obviously spent years trying to rebrand it, get people yes. like you younger up and you know like the the future to forget that <laughs> mm. that was sort of my path. So, right. I had a, a show with Gail Simmons and Marcus Marcus Samuelson, like a talk show thing called The Feed. Right. The Feed. That's a great title for yeah. a show about food. It was kind of like Top Gear, which I also don't watch, uh, but about food instead <laughs> sure, of cars. Sure, sure. Uh, okay. You know, that audience is almost too obvious. It's like, they're all I right agree. here, you yeah. know? I agree. Uh, and then I did a show that was kind of like The Amazing Race Meets Chopped. That was uh, ooh, like- dangerous. It was called Pressure Cooker. And couples, oh God, I've done two- Did they s- run with cutlery? Kind of, yeah, yeah. So wow. it's rule of culture number six: it's you cannot, cannot run, run with, with cutlery. cutlery. Oh, you're gonna stab an eye out, uh, which would have made for good television. More people would have watched it. Yeah. But totally. This is the episode where they had to like <laughs> have VO at the end explaining why there's no footage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, the idea was like a couple's. Uh, like brother, sister, husband, wife, etc. One who's a professional cook, one who's bad. Uh-huh. Three teams would be dropped in a state they'd never been in. Love it. Um, they would get like clues 
basically to um, where grocery stores were. Okay. They weren't allowed to use GPS, <laughs> only had a flip phone. This is it's insane. Already genius. So I half of it. the show was kind of like a, you know, like the ama- like weird, uh, they'd be trying to get to some grocery store, but yeah. then like a herd of sheep would cross the road and they're like, <laughs> honey and they'd be fighting and then they go to the grocery store and they're like we're only a liquor store and they're oh, like man. we only have 20 minutes to get and then the and then it was outdoor cooking for the second half in the vista of like we did portland maine philly it was like oh. then localized uh i mean it was crazy that's incredible you need so many skills to be good at that oh my god yeah uh, and then i did a show on bravo called recipe for deception that was even more complicated wow. what's the deception okay <laughs> Yeah, what is this? So <clears throat> it was kind of like chopped in that yeah. you had like, I guess it was four shit. It was like one on one, one on one, and then the winners would face off. Okay. So three rounds. Yeah. Each had to make a dish with a secret ingredient. The trick was they didn't know their own secret ingredient, <laughs> but the other chef did. So they were allowed at the top of the show to ask three questions of the other chef, yes or no questions to narrow down their secret ingredient. Wow. And that chef answered with two truths and a lie. Jesus. It was like you needed Fifth. scrap is, paper. It was a Mobius, so compl- a Mobius strip. It's of, a Mobius strip of a, of a reality show. I had to do so much ADR trying, like, as <laughs> they tried to piece the story of each thing because they'd be like, so, like, the whole show is that weird, hushed Padma Top Chef style, yes, like yes, ADR yes. done years later. <laughs> uh, just me being like, so right now, Doug is trying to cook a shrimp dish, but he misunderstand the clue. That was the lie, lie clue. His ingredient is actually marshmallow. He's got nothing sweet the going. Lie- Meanwhile, like, so it was because oh they didn't even have the God. same ingredient. It was. It was a lie. And then like at 10 minutes, they got to ask one more question. If they got it right, if they guessed it with as a lie, they then got to ask a fourth question. It was it was a little bit doomed. It was That's fun to crazy. make. That's crazy. Manifold. Yeah. Just. Are you a food show fan now? You know, um, that stuff came out of me like writing uh, Eater and Grantland recaps of food oh, yeah, shows right. for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And I think all that time spent watching yeah. and having to be like, you know, look for the moment, find the yeah. animated gif or whatever um after those shows i like mm-hmm. i have not watched any of them but not out of any like uh, i'm above it or beyond it just being like i can't jump back into top chef i think it's a good show but yeah like, yeah yeah yeah. totally i, I have to say i have a blind spot for like food shows same i i, I try to watch nailed it oh nailed but i feel that the stakes are right. I, I know that the whole point is that like it's it's the stakes aren't there but and, and I do love Nicole. That was yes. also my fourth show. The stakes aren't there, which is people. <laughs> it was like stakes a butchery cutoff, but they didn't yeah, know yeah, where yeah, yeah. their stakes were, so they would have to follow a map that was only half real. Uh, I live. <laughs> the stakes, stakes aren't there. there. <laughs> and so someone would say that in every episode. Yeah, yeah, organically. Yeah. <laughs> they would. They would. They would. They would, they would, they would be like a plate, and they'd reveal the plate, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. stakes wouldn't be there. And uh, someone would say the stakes aren't stakes there, aren't and there. then the show would begin. <laughs> Wow. Oh man, I'm, I I will say that. Um, speaking of steaks, a great British Bake Off has turned me right. around. I watch yeah. that religiously now because it's sort of like diametrically opposite from what we're used to. Mm-hmm. It's just so it's so genteel and it's so like lovely and yeah, not stressful. I use the the, yeah. the acronym incorrectly all the time. I'm sure, but it's a like ASMR. ASMR yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like we literally in our new apartment, my girlfriend and I, like we were like we're not going to have a TV in the yeah. bedroom. We used to. Yes. We watched too much TV in the bedroom, but we put one back on the dresser just for. 10 minutes of Great British Bake Off before bed. Okay. It is the most soothing. It's a mm-hmm. nightcap. It's a, it's a fun little... It See, is, I yeah. think what's missing from Great British Bake Off for me is the cutthroat, bitchy quality that I need, That's which n- is why I think I'd like Top Chef. You're never going to get that from GBB. Uh, no, I'm not, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. But like, I didn't think I was going to like Project Runway, and then right. I started watching Project Runway, and I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're truly nasty. Right. But Padma's... Padma's Fantastic. I haven't seen that much Top Chef either. Queen but Padma. Padma but is like, wonderful. I mean, She's yes. really, really, I, yeah, I got to like meet her and hang out with her once and she was you did. everything I wanted her. <sighs> what what happened was is that like uh, they, I, I got to guest judge on an episode of Top Great. Chef, like kind of as cross promotion for yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, someone in the Bravo de- marketing department was like, you know, we've got you there where we're filming for the day. We should do like kind of a web yeah, you know, like, well, let's do this thing where you maybe do like a funny kind of sketch uh-huh. with Padma. You know, we have her for twenty minutes or whatever. Right. Yeah. So before I even pitched anything out, they're like, and just you know, some ground rules with Padma. You know, I, you know, like obviously she loves to has a great sense of humor about herself. Loves to have fun. You know, like she's up for anything. Though you know, uh, no jokes that it makes it seem like she doesn't know about food. Uh, no jokes that <laughs> undercut this. Nothing that points out. Like oh, it was kind of an intense, like calculated, yeah, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then the idea I pitched was like, well, I am genuinely 
in awe of her and not as experienced as her. Why don't we do a thing where I play up being like a nervous new food host interviewing the queen of food TV. The queen of all that, yes. And just like, I can just be kind of uh, bad at it and she can be a little like condescending in her. (laughs) And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're we're totally gonna tell her about that. Like, that'll be great. Uh And I'm like, yeah, it seems easy. She can just lean into what she does and I can do whatever. (laughs) So we're placed in this tiny little unair conditioned green room like that clearly interrupts her hair and makeup for the real. Mm. She's like, I'm doing a favor for the like Bravo web department. But obviously they- (laughs) I have 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And she's sitting there and like her, you know, like hair and makeup birds are flooding around and I'm just like, no, it's fine. I'll sweat through this suit. I don't care at all, (laughs) genuinely. So I'm sitting there kind of almost like knee to knee with her Uh because it's like a tight one camera two shot or yeah. whatever and no one really introduces me or someone's like uh padma this is max he's 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 gonna be a judge today but he's also he's hosting recipe for deception she just kind of does like a nod and uh-huh. looks at me clearly not prepped not ready to do the sketch oh, no. and so off camera um she's like looking at me and she's like so like w- so what is what is your show that you're hosting and uh, I say, uh, well, it's called Recipe for Deception. It's, it's going to be on after Top Chef uh, this this coming season. And, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a food competition show. It, it, I mean, it's not like yours. It's not Top Chef. It's kind of more like Chopped, kind of like one-offs. <laughs> and she's like, I've never seen Chopped. <laughs> it's such a deliberate way. And I was like, yes, of course. I guess what I mean is it's not a king of the hill. It's just there's four chefs. And yeah. the thing is, they don't know their secret ingredient. <laughs> and she's oh just God. staring at me like unblinking you know, statuesque as I just like blubber and fast talk and like blink, 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 blink. And I'm like, so anyway, they're you you know, like getting away from you and you're like, oh my God. Totally. And I'm like, hey, so, you know, they, uh, they don't know, but it's kind of fun and they lie. And so there's a little bit of puzzling and, uh, <laughs> and she just is like, you know, if you're going to be hosting the show, a lot of people are going to be asking you what the show is about. So you should probably get good at answering that question in under 20 seconds. And then looks away from me and the producer's just like, yeah, that's the energy we were thinking, Padma. Like, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. It's just like, wow. that's how the whole, uh, whole interview went. It's just me the motor mouthing. Th- the thing uh. is, I have there. I have one experience um, where somebody, I think, when, <laughs> they didn't mean anything by it, but shook me to my car, which was my Seinfeld experience. Oh, oh sure. I booked a thing on, co- on Comedians in Cars like years ago where I played... Um, Jerry Seinfeld and Michael Richards Michael Richards' assistant. Yes, yes. And so Jerry, I guess You're crumbling down all my beliefs about the <laughs> veracity of comedians and cars. <laughs> right. Yeah. Jerry, I guess, doesn't shake hands. Sure, yeah. yeah. So I I went up to shake his hand because he actually had cast me for the part. Like he was, he was in, in the, the room, room like, yeah. when I when I auditioned. Like I, no one knew that was gonna happen. It's like for this tiny part, it's like the thing. This is crackle days. So cool. It's the crackle days. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, back when they were doing like sketch. And Michael Whoa, Richards was yeah. like, he played like the head of Crackle. That was the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And so basically what happened was I'm there on set and I, I'm excited. It's the first thing I've ever booked and it's oh my Jerry God, yeah. Seinfeld. Yeah. And so I and go you booked up, it in the room. It's not just room. like, I mean, oh, he yeah. chose me for wow. it. Wow. And then they, he called me and he was like, Matt, come in here. I was like, he knows my name. Oh my God. Wow, wow, wow. I go up and it's him and it's like um, this like guy who's like his head writer and I go to shake his hand and I say this is so this is such an honor thank you so much he goes I don't shake hands and I was like okay and then I was he goes this is uh, my head writer this is so and so and I go to shake his hand and he goes I don't shake hands either <sighs> and I go oh for two <laughs> and they That's were funny. like, and they like cocked their head and they were like hmm mm. uh, well this is gonna be great see ya and I was uh, like okay hadn't shot one thing <laughs> and I was like ruined that oh, oh man my energy in those situations is I would be like well I hope you're a hugger you know like yeah, I, I know. always <laughs> over like when I sense a waiter Mm-hmm. not liking like light bits at the top of the oh, meal. Yeah. I'm yeah. just like, well, I'm you I'm doubling in. down. Yep, like yeah. I'm going to have like a whole routine of, of where the menus are. Like it's <laughs> as she just loses patience mm-hmm. and I just keep like getting sweatier and like my collar getting looser or whatever. Wow. I dig in as well. What Do you have any experience with a celebrity where you were like thrown? Mm. You you um, have to see a lot of celebs. I but what, what are my experiences? I don't know. Here's a good one we can share. Okay, what? So we did Vulture Festival. Yes. We were like hosting at Vulture Festival. We were doing like um, the press room. Mm. And Juliana Margulies was oh, coming oh, in. Oh, yeah. This is fine. And the publicist runs in and she's like, I don't know what this is, but Juliana's coming in and, you know, 
she's doing Anna Margulies. Like she doesn't do like bits. She was like, she's like, whatever you guys have planned, she's probably not going to be game to do it. Just, just forget about <laughs> and it. Just, and she's really cold, by the way. Yeah. It's really cold in this yeah. place. And, uh, she's, and so, she's freezing. She's freezing. She's freezing cold. She has prepared answers about <laughs> process. <laughs> just let her read them. And we were like, oh my god, we're, we're wearing like fine. these ridiculous suits. We're like not <laughs> journalists. We're like, right. oh my god, it's like Vulture Fest. We like write the RuPaul's Drag Race recaps. That's the only reason. Your we're first there. move is to touch everyone's hair. Yeah, like, exactly. Just fully like, we're just like, hey, them girl. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. literally, like we had just done <laughs> something with John Jonathan Van Ness, where we were just like screaming, like screaming. Right, just the three and of then us, Juliana yeah. comes in, and we were so terrified. It was Marty. Well, first it was Marty Knoxon, yes, who is a queen legend, and then um oh May. May something that actress in um, Dietland, yes, fantastic. So it was it was for some Dietland press thing. Yeah. So Marty and this actress come in, and then Juliana comes in, just clenched at her biceps, just like it's so it's so cold in this room. Is yeah. this she, is it going to be as cold in this room as it is in the other room? And we were like, oh my god, no, this is yeah. really going to happen. She's yeah. really. Hi, we're journalists. Nice. We're also in charge of the temperature in all these rooms. <laughs> yeah. So glad you asked us. So then she sits down, and then. Like the cameras start rolling, and then what do we do? I mean, like, this is all a blur to me, honestly. Well, basically, we, it was like, <laughs> at that point, it's like, well, we're still going to be us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then we start playing. You're not going to suddenly be good, like, be yeah, journalists. Yeah, I'm not going to, like, I, I don't, I wouldn't know what to ask Juliana right. Margulies about her process. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Like, we, we didn't know. So we end up doing, like, a bit with her, and she actually was game to do it. Of course. And then, so basically, like, by the end she, of it, she was like, oh, like, super, like, down to clown and like, why great. doesn't my team let me do more <laughs> bits? And meanwhile, someone's like, I'm gonna get fucking fired. And <laughs> then, like, th that kept happening too. Like, throughout the thing, like, the publicity people would come in and they'd be like, mm, and this is gonna be the way it is, and don't stray from it, and right. don't ask this question. And yeah, like, yeah, literally, yeah. one celebrity came in and we were asked explicitly while he was right there. This, the publicist was like, do not ask any questions about their personal life. And he made a face at me like, I'm so sorry. I right. was like, yeah, I mean, of course we would. I feel like, yeah, publicists are often those people's worst enemy of like, yeah. they're being, they're making everyone hate that person on their behalf. But it's like sure. about the publicist thing. But I, th I also think it's probably there's some actors that are like, I, want, I mean, I, this is so fun. Comedians, I'd love to do bits. Yes. And then like have in the past done the like, Liam Neeson in that Ricky Gervais show where yeah. he's like wants to do an improv oh, yeah, and he yeah, just like yeah. keeps saying he has full blown AIDS. Yes, uh -huh. just, like, yes, so yes. There's clearly actors who like should be protected <laughs> right. from riffing off the top I of their head where that, the publicist yeah. is like, you are going to say such a horrible thing yeah. if you're allowed to. And then by, but by the end of the Juliana interview, she came over to us and she said, quote, well, you two are a hoot and a holler. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, she Matt. said to me, she goes, you know, you could be Matt Bomer's little brother. <laughs> and I was like, wow. I literally looked her in the eyes and I was like, that's the best thing anyone's right. ever said to me. <laughs> Insane. Um, she was like very kind, and I, but that's the thing is, it's like you don't know who's who's telling the truth there. It's a, it's a, it's a weird situation because it's like the publicist probably has been told by the celebrity right. before, like, how dare you let me do that? Yeah. But also, you know, they're overcompensating because they don't want to be put in that situation. Sure. I, I always think every, like, I watched all, all of The Good Wife, really mm -hmm. like Juliana Margulies. Mm -hmm. She's uh, amazing. But yeah. I remember reading a thing. Um, Probably on Vulture that like uh, Les Moonves, R.I.P. Thank God yeah, had bye. Um, bye. had uh, I guess the only way Juliana like was is it Juliana 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 Juliana, Juliana Margulies Juliana, Juliana. Juliana. Yeah. the only way she was willing to do the Good Wife after obviously being doing the grind of uh, an hour drama yeah, for so many yes. years and she didn't want to dip back in those waters is she's like I'm not gonna straighten my hair and do hours in the chair to play this like waspy, uh -huh. Love like that. whatever's wife. So she's like, if we can figure out a wig situation and did and like her, you know, her hair the whole time oh, is like a very expensive wig. wig. So she could show up and plug it in and save herself like, you know, over a the course of, of eight seasons. But that it was like such a success to convince like this lead nervous about uh, yeah. TV that wi like, that wigs or the future that <laughs> Les Moonves would like farm out uh, Juliana Margulies to like sit down with other actresses nervous about doing TV or taking weird mm -hmm, character swings mm -hmm. being wow. like no no you can do it in a wig like Juliana will have like she'll and she would she'd be like I'd love to talk to other actresses about how great it is to just wear a wig every day wow. but I just used to like imagine these like weird generals or whatever at the <laughs> yeah. South Beverly Grill just being like <laughs> you know oh my god that's crazy your kids go to crossroads and like oh we thought <laughs> about it anyway oh, wigs. <laughs> wigs okay yeah we'll do the artichoke tip. So wigs, you know, like, oh. what has your experience in the past been with wigs? Because the technology is whatever. That thing Honestly, just get wig into technology it. is crazy. It's, yeah. it's there. Yes, it's moving quickly. Because now I'm trying to think back to the good wife and think, was there ever a time when she was, I was like, that's a wig. When it was like pulled back or something? Yeah. Like, no, your kids go to crossroads. <laughs>
Oh my god. No, <laughs> that she makes me think of she, multiple people. And the thing is, I'm so, I'm so happy you brought up Les Moonves because I I'm I've been waiting to talk about this. Oh, on the pod. Absolutely. So Julie Chen is going to leave the talk. Just saw that headline today. Don't right, know the right. dates. We're triumphant about it because she came after us. She came after us because at that very same Vulture, Vulture Fest, Festival, wow. We interviewed Tracy Morgan. And you, maybe you don't remember this, but there was that weird thing about Tracy Morgan talking shit about Tiffany Haddish. Oh, like, I missed that. But yeah. don't they work together? Yes. yes. And so we at, we were doing, and we didn't even know Tracy was coming and no harried publicist ran in and right. said, well, Tracy's coming no, in. We were told all day, Tracy's not doing yeah. press room. And we were like, great. And was he doing press for, for the, the for TV? Last OG. Yeah. Last yeah, yeah, OG. Yeah. And so then he finally comes in and then he sits down and he's giving us great vibes. And then like we start the interview and then the first thing we ask him is, uh, 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 congrats on the last OG. How does it feel to be working with all these great actors um, like Tiffany Haddish? And then he goes, we're not going to talk about her. He and said then, that with no, oh wow. Yeah, he said that. And then, but then it became this thing that he, it became this longer meditation about how it takes so many people to make a successful TV show. And he's memorized every yeah. crew member's names. And it was a beautiful sort of he was rumination like, on that. If you're going to ask about Tiffany, ask about Cedric, ask about the crew, ask yeah. about craft services. And he's like, I know all their names. And so I'm thinking like we're doing a little bit of a bit now, but he's hard to read. Yeah. So then the way it was edited down and the way it got picked up in the media was like, Tracy Morgan talks shit about Tiffany Haddish. Right. So they so play then, it on the talk. Yeah. And Miss Julie Chen says, "Julie Chen Moonves, I'm sorry, Julie. Sorry, Chen Julie Chen yeah, Moonves, yeah. signing off, <laughs> signing off, <laughs> confidently standing yeah. with her abuser husband. Oh, yeah. It's important to nail this home. Who the is... Me Too movement is the real big brother. Oh, anyway, Julie, tr- Julie Chen, <laughs> signing off. <laughs> so Julie Chen Moonves says." You know, I thought it was really kind of disrespectful of of the interviewers to ask a question about the a co-star <laughs> when the star of the show is sitting right there. When meanwhile, a to act like she's never asked someone oh about God. their co-star in her entire journalistic career yeah. is truly insane. Wow. And b the whole point of what he was saying was shine a light on other people. Yeah, let's talk about all the co-stars. <laughs> so it was truly insane. So like Julie Chen Moonves's downfall is one that we are. Just, we're we're just fine with. We're just fine with. I mean, yeah, he's the the Howard stuff today was interesting. Howard oh, Stern, yeah, Howard Stern came after came after Julie, Les, Julie. and but, but, yeah, both of them. I mean, but, it's it feels yeah. hard to it's hard to separate the totally. two of them when you're you know like a, a badass unit. Yeah, you know? totally. Well, he was like, "How are you gonna leave? Like, you're gonna leave the talk and like where women talk about these things. That's a slap in the face to women, you know. To to side and he was mainly saying to side with Les Moonves right now. Totally, is, like, totally. truly crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, of course, like, of course she is. Of right, course, of course, of course. I think she's old school. But that's a very good wife narrative. It's a oh, very wow. good wife narrative. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. that's definitely like. Uh, an easy thing to put in the like a pit like well for season three we're thinking uh, that you know like just yeah, I haven't yeah, really yeah. thought it out but uh, yeah. <laughs> I, you can think about it yeah. that was a good show The Good Wife huh it was a, I haven't watched the new The, oh, good, the good Fight, fight. yeah I hear that's great yeah I, I never I never got into I'm still in the like the first couple seasons where it's still like a procedural I still what The Good Wife The Good Wife I feel like the reason it's hard mm. to get into The Good Wife is because now you have all these prestige shows that are like 12 episodes and The Good Wife was still hearkening back to the era of 24 episode yeah. seasons. Yeah. And it's just like really a, a slog. slog. Yeah. Well, see, I don't love um, cooling out with comedy yeah. as far as binging goes. Right. Like that's just Same. like if I'm cooking or whatever, that's usually not what I want to put on. Right. But Good Wife is a show where like because it's 24 episodes, because it's only semi serialized, it's not like, oh, I got to sit down and watch my homework. It's uh-huh. like yeah. blowing through four at a time while I'm like half paying attention. Yeah. You know, yeah. I. I I, I I maybe have missed some scenes. Sure, right, sure, of totally. Wait, that's interesting that you feel like. So, do you feel like when you are watching comedy shows, other comedy shows that you're not working on, it feels like homework? No, no. I, I was talking about prestige oh, dramas sure, sure, feeling sure. like yeah. homework, but it, comedy is just it's more the serial serialized thing yeah, yeah, where yeah. I I've, there's so much TV to watch that yeah people will be like, well, you have to check out this comedy show, right. and I'll watch it and like it, but it will never occur to me to keep watching. Right. Like, totally. That's why I I thought Search Party was so effective of just oh. like give you the thinnest. Not that it's thin, but just like just a little bit just of plot of a movement yeah, and yeah, a yeah. thread that I want to watch the next one rather than being like, okay, that felt yeah, that felt good. It, anytime I do watch good comedies, I enjoy them. Yeah. I just mostly am like, I'd rather watch this show about you know, <laughs> a, a a pile of dead British children <laughs> yeah. being found, you know, 
in a rectory or whatever. You know, I, I <laughs> you know, know what the I got taste. so fucking into when it was on The Killing. Oh my god, oh, yeah. that was the thickest, darkest show you could yeah. ever imagine. It was truly like. Dead and, and, and that show, show would have because it was all, it was thirteen episodes, or whatever. They would just have yeah. three episodes where being like, "Oh, you know, you know, like you know, when we found that like <laughs> pile of kid toes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we thought that was probably the guy that was been cutting off kids' heads. We it thought actually that might have been him. Yeah, that was just a separate, <laughs> separate <laughs> kid toe thing that's not really essential. Those kids are alive and <laughs> no, like yeah, it's messed up. But yeah. And yeah. by the way, here's thirteen minutes of the mother from last season still heaving, sobbing, yes. and oh, grief. Remember, no. remember all the deep grief we thought we at least would move past. They'll, they'll no, just no. come back around to scream about you know i love that the hype yell at was the gods. it was like the first two seasons was still based on that first case of uh-huh, the girl uh-huh, uh-huh. and then the third season was i think they took like a year off and then they came back and they were like the height and was mm-mm, 15 times more dead kids yeah <laughs> it was like you thought there was just one no bitch yeah, yeah, yeah. we're killing a lot of kids this we time. had to get a bigger backhoe from oregon <laughs> to come clean out the dead kids we filled a swamp full of dead kids <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And some of the dead kids out. had kids, <laughs> yeah. and like oh their kids are underneath. <laughs> I can't. Did you watch the killing? No, I, I, I watched the killing with someone I was dating. Uh huh. And I remember it was. I guess we were in like a dark place because I was dating this guy, and we were watching the killing. And then like the first time we were gonna like hook up. He goes, you know what album we have to listen to? Whoa, what? Adele Twenty One. <laughs> what? I was, and I, this this is the real thing that happened. This is a psychopath. And I was like. Okay, so our life is devastating. It didn't work out. But yeah, I mean, yeah. like every time? <laughs> he said that he heard from a friend. It's like, uh, like. That that was the good album to hook up to. Wow. No way. I like the idea that that is like your, your Pavlov. That sets the mood. <laughs> Anytime it's like, you know what album we have to listen to? Adele 21. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to take a quick shower. And, then <laughs> and I got a on, it's track two. rough hand job too. <laughs> Don't you remember? <laughs> oh my God. That's like someone, yeah, wanting to get blown to like Blue by Joni. Like. That's yes, crazy. Bitch. <laughs> put on, put on D'Angelo. Yeah, I know. Anything else? I masturbate to Bosch the show on. I don't watch it. I just need to have, you know, the smooth Some people... saxophone sounds of him driving around LA. Right. Here's a sexy question: music or no music during the sexy time? Oh, I I've done either, but I love I love a good little sound soundtrack. I almost never listen to music. During, yeah. I, like there's something about if there's music on in the house, but like there's there, there's such an artifice. Not yes. that like sex, yeah. especially in a long term relationship, doesn't have quite a bit of artifice around <laughs> yeah, it right. anyway. Uh, but like there's such a. I've always felt yeah. so self conscious about the vibe of like <laughs> picking a playlist. Anytime uh-huh. I would read like a New York Mag Sex Diary or some like <laughs> yeah. real yeah, thing yeah, of yeah. someone being like, "Oh, they always had sex to like this R and B album." <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "You like Wait, go what? to your phone and like cast it to your Apple yeah. TV." <laughs> like, oh, this song's a little too like bass heavy or like I just <laughs> also the intensity of it can creep up on you. Like I remember my ex boyfriend like the second or third time we like had sex, like one plus one by Beyonce oh, came on, which is about being eternally <laughs> in love. That's and lot. having like true groundswell like <laughs> love making mm-hmm, and she's like mm-hmm. do! what I, she's doing her whole Beyonce thing and, and you and might do a shuffle and like like one of your <laughs> yeah. own like uh, voice memos like uh, here's a good bit a voiceover audition from your voice memo just being like hey good whatever like trying to like <laughs> nail a kid show or something it's a footwell and yeah. they use a <laughs> right. Karen Maslin right. Yeah. Oh my God! So the, the footwell. It said that they were looking for naturalistic, but then the guy they went with. I mean, this guy's theater trained. I mean, he's booming here. I'm like, you're like in someone. <laughs> um, wait, but that's not to say that you have experience, of course, blasting the classical music, so that the ch- you sure can yes, drown out that is the, my own private. Now we're gonna now. get back to what you said, Bowen, which about, was about in the special. It's revealed. That during during me time, as during you put time, it, yes, time. you had to block out the sounds of the children who were, went to the elementary school that you lived next literally door. next yeah. door to. Yes, that's a horrifying thing. Yeah, it was so I mean, do either of you guys live in Williamsburg? No, I live in Greenpoint. I'm okay, in Greenpoint. so it, it's the school on uh, Metropolitan and Leonard. Sure, yeah, it's like a it's like a it's a grade school, and like something I forgot with the bit is that. Uh, most people that know schools in like the suburbs, mm-hmm. like there is grass and there are like um, things to climb on and fields like city schools yes. are just like sound <laughs> baths. It's it's asphalt and like cage <laughs> and, and brick. Screaming. And, yeah. And yeah. traffic right there. Yeah. And like, so the sound was that much. And the kids didn't have anything to do yeah, no. except <laughs> scream. Um, and run around in a circle. Yeah, exactly. Just scream at each other. And like I was writing at home alone and constantly procrastinating and like 10 feet away and was always... <laughs> I don't talk about this as much in the bit, but I like, I, I, 
like at some point, all these people that have come out as um, like dark perverts in a way that's gotten, <laughs> yes. I don't want to misuse the term pervert because perversion implies a certain normal, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but of course. that have come out as like, oh, there's something graduated to like sexual assault or like disrespect right, right, right. Yes. other people at some point, like at some point they did cross the threshold yeah. and just be like, oh, that thing that I, I didn't mean to jerk off in front of someone the first time that I did, but like, but it, it didn't kind of have huge consequences. And that was like definitely the best time I ever jerked off. Like that's <laughs> at oh some God, point yeah. as circumstances came together, they weren't like, uh, I imagine, and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a psychologist. They weren't born with an impulse to just be like, you know, that's specifically what it's, you know, like yes, it, yes, it's, yes. things happen and escalate or whatever. So I weirdly like uh, always living next to a school just felt like I'm just an adult with weird thoughts and I watch pornography and I like but there's just innocence there and I, I just know, don't know so wow you're giving this all the the appropriate contours I think so thank you for, for no. doing that <laughs> but that is crazy though yeah they're they're, they're right there is your jerk and also them. they're the loudest that's the loudest age you can't oh, so loud. you talk in your in your special about like it's truly just when you get to recess you just scream, scream. and these kids just screaming and you're in your home that you own, yeah. that you rent that at I the rent. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're well within your rights to procrastinate. Yeah, yeah. Quote unquote. Yeah. Anytime, any way you would like. If anything, they've transgressed by Absolutely. putting their screams Absolutely. into my personal space. Yeah. I'm doing due diligence <laughs> to keep my business out of theirs. You know, oh. if anything, they should come knock at the door and thank me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, that's exactly what I want. And actually, that's my thing. I just discovered that. A uh, teacher <laughs> knocking on my door and thanking me hey, just, just as I finish say, is my yeah. thing. Hey, just we all, we all very much my you this thing. Yeah, that's, um, and it, there, there also used to be, and I don't. I guess it's because I would like be thinking about weird stand-up premises while there was children around. But like, <laughs> yeah. they always used to park buses on my street and around the corner oh. that would have these signs yeah. in the back that said, um, like, uh, printed out on paper, taped to the back door window that said, um, no sleeping children inside. <laughs> and I think it was a thing of, like, just someone has checked. The bus can drive away. There's not, like, we know all the yeah. kids are off the bus. Right. We don't want to have a situation where it's, like, in the heat of a depot sure, in Queens. Sure, oh, sure. yeah, for but sure. But just, like, yeah. the idea of, like, that was, like, like, who would volunteer for that job? <laughs> oh, just God. be like, I'd love to check. Chuck these buses <laughs> for... I need someone to check for kids. Yeah, and they're, these kids are like exhausted. And they, <laughs> they haven't had breakfast or they lunch and they're just, oh my God, yeah. I'll, Insane. I'll carry them out. Oh no, yeah, yeah. no, no, trust no. Trust me, trust me, I'm really good at just... Yeah, I'm really, I can spot them. Yeah, no, I'll take my shoes off before I get on the bus so I don't <laughs> wake them. Oh yeah, you're welcome to wake them. That's actually a big part of it. No, you can't wake these little, <laughs> They're angels. <laughs> Because then we won't know if they're sleeping. We're looking yeah. for sleeping. Kids. So anyway, I got fired because I kept putting up a sign that said "No sleeping angels," <laughs> and they said you have to say "No, no sleeping, sleeping children." Angels. <laughs> so take yourself back laugh. to the time when you were the angel, the angelic cherubic. Sure. Child. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And now we'll ask you the question that we ask all of our guests, which is, Max, what is the culture that made you say culture is for me? This is a piece of culture, or just a larger cultural concept like the town you grew up in, or a movie, a book, a play, whatever it is that sort of set you off in this path. Um, you know, I got to say the culture um, for me that both kind of like, I don't know, taught me about uh, the first culture I got obsessed about, obsessed mm -hmm. about like part of the fun for me and culture uh, and the Internet's made it a little bit easier is like uh, searching out more of a thing yes. and, and being able to find a thing and knowing more about it yeah. and being a completist and this collection vibe. It's something millennial and I'm right on the edge. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys get it. Uh, but it was Goosebumps. The, oh, the original Goosebumps wow. series. Wow. Mr. Stein. Mr. Stein. Mr. Arl Stein. And I, you know, I never got into the later, like he, you know, he, he continues to create a, right. you yeah. know. He, uh, the franchises keep like bubbling out. But yeah. for, you know, when I first got into them and like, I guess maybe it was like, the fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Yep. Um, <sighs> I, I was like always a super reader as a kid. Like I was an only child. We did a lot of like road trips for my parents, like work and stuff. And mm -hmm. I could read in the car. Yeah. So they library books and books, they were always happy to like whatever you need. But that was the first thing where I'm like, oh, this is number two yeah of, and like so you go into certain walden books and they have like right. one seven ten and fourteen yep. but it's like oh i've never seen six around yeah. like the idea of ordering online and all that stuff didn't exist so like it was this excitement of like a collection be, thing a collection of like i want them all i want to read them all i want to have a bookshelf that shows all the pretty colors yes. of like one through yes. 40 so that like prime ah. set of goosebumps like was when i became 
in middle school and high school, like obsessive about my fandom, just you know, about or just about the the completest thing is important here mm-hmm. because it's just about filling a set or of just having a thorough breadth of everything about this one thing and, and saying I know everything about this. Yes, thing. yes and saying yes. I'm the guy that has like more goosebumps than you. Oh, like, yeah, you know, like a kid being like, "Oh, I read that one." I'm like, "Well, did you read all the other ones?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, yeah, I yeah, did. yeah, yeah. And you know, and I I feel like that weird. I'm a little OCD uh, or just a little obsessive in, yeah. in some ways. And there's the ability to be like, well, I want to read them in order. Right. Yeah. I want to like, oh, I want to yeah. know all the side stories. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just going to like, and then go in this little thing and I'm going to write, I'm going to have a Word document that has the list of the ones I had. Like all that's mellowed in my adult, Yes, you know, learning about priorities and such. But as a middle schooler, that was the beginning of that. So there's a lot of things that yes. came out of that. That's a great one. Was that an entry point into like you liking more scary shit? It weirdly, it, it, it like, for I, me, for me, it wasn't because as a fellow Goosebumps, now this is it's all coming back to me. It wasn't about horror; it was just about the the franchise. But go, yeah, Sorry. and they were like, uh, I think it was definitely about getting into novels. They were page turners mm. in a way that not all chapter books, totally YA chapter books. I don't even call that YA; it's almost younger than that. But mm, like, yeah. a lot of times they weren't scary; they were almost silly. But so silly. Every two page chapter just ended <laughs> with like. Uh, and then Shelly opened the closet yeah. and there was a shark. And you turn the yeah. page and be like, actually, it was a stuffed yeah, yeah, shark. Yeah, yeah. Doug left it. There. I forgot they were like that. They were, they all, were like, all like pull that. your feet out from you. Like nothing there. Like yes. it was just like the thinnest of mysteries. And you go to the next gooey number yeah. in the chat. Yeah, it gooey. Was, oh my God. They and also gooey. like that started my, my fandom for trippy fonts. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if everyone knows that I love trippy <laughs> fonts. Trippy I think font, letters that are melting. Font. Are they wet? Are they yeah, sweating? Yeah, 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 I think that's kind of a big thing. I think they're gooey. I think they're gooey. I don't think... I don't think it's more more complicated than that. <laughs> okay, best best, really best book in the series for you. Oh. Um, are you a stay out of the basement queen? Night of the Living Dummy. Night of the Living Dummy. Night of the Living and Dummy. I actually like. I haven't even seen the new Ghost Goosebumps movie. It's, oh right. Like, it's not hitting. Like it no longer. I don't have that connection know, to it. Same. But when the I saw the trailer for the new one, and when you saw Slappy, you were like, Oh, oh yeah, it like brought this stuff out. Yeah. Um, and Slappy is iconic. Slappy is canon. Slappy is gay I don't canon. know Goosebuck. Goosebumps. What? Sla- I mean, he is the like uh, iconic, scary, yeah. ventriloquist dummy. Yes. Oh, sure, yes. sure, you sure. Know, like the, those, those, the you eyebrows, know. the mouth. I was. He obs- looks like us. He looks like he looks like more dolls. Like, no, yes, he looks right. like yeah. Teddy Perkins from Atlanta. <laughs> right. Did, did you watch Atlanta yeah, this yeah. season? Like, I, I have seen that episode. I yes, haven't watched all of it. But the but Donald Glover is in whiteface as this crazy looking person, and it just looks. I think whoever vision boarded this, whoever like. Whatever art had person it as a, had Slappy, as had a slappy on as a reference, absolutely guaranteed. I was talking with um, somebody the other day about like, oh, so they were like, why isn't there like an alt comedy ventriloquist? And I really think <gasps> that like <laughs> ventriloquism, like I was into magic, I was into comedy as a kid, like yeah. I like the idea of that stuff. Like wow. ventrilo- it seems so hard. It seems so hard. Like no alt, no person who's doing a joke yes. about ventriloquism is going to learn how to do it to, to learn to be good at both things yeah was, i was trying for the longest time to either build or buy or commission like a robot like 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 an like a robot head face thing that would just like do comedy with you that i would like program things to say <laughs> but also that. like it, you could program it to blow you i, right? could, I mean like it's totally like, it i does mean both. I that's yeah, what yeah, he's yeah, really yeah. getting yeah, yeah. no no, no. and like, eventually right right and like through like recursive learning it like it would right. blow me you wanted to fuck the thing. i wanted to fuck the you robot. want it to decide to learn to blow <laughs> yes, you yeah, you don't want to yeah, like yes, you don't no. want to this you're not it's not your slave totally because yeah, then yeah. that's just too much of a god complex right but it could also torment you want some chase in it could torment yeah it could it could replace kara maslin <laughs> wait, Shh, don't goosebumps. say that. Oh my yeah. god, wait, goosebumps. Okay. You guys need to say no to more things. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, but you know what you know what I'm realizing now? It goosebumps is bleeding in with me with Are You Afraid of the Dark? Sure. Which sure. also was like is that big for you too? Gorgeous. That was very like <laughs> Are You Afraid of Dark is a weird show where I used to babysit on Saturday nights, um, like when I was maybe in like uh, second grade or something like mm-hmm. that. And uh, Snick and Are You Afraid of Dark yep. was Snick. like big. That'd be right before they'd come home. That would be the last thing. I thought people in Hollywood, like I didn't know it was Canadian until I was oh, like shit. 19 yep. years old. And like everyone is just like, you know, what are you being so like nervous about? Eh? Like, come on. We, like it's just a, a deep Canadian yeah, yeah, show. Yeah. But wow. I thought that's what like the child actor accent was. <laughs> Oh my god! I was god. like, oh, they talk different. That's like a, I don't know. It's not the valley, but it's like that must be just L.A. Not knowing it was just it's, it's, so. It's, it's a weird I didn't co- connect it's, that. It's, it's like this. It's 
Yeah, everybody's yeah. just like, come on, we got to be serious about it. Hey, hey. Like, I just didn't know. I don't do a great Canadian, but they don't sound. They don't sound like that show was truly scary. Are you afraid of the dark? Was was huge. We've talked about this on the pod before, but there's also a, sticky letter. Also, uh, also gooey letters. No, gooey letters. Let, no, are you afraid of the dark? No, it was the, it was the match. The and match. It was a, a slab serif font. It was big and right. bold. Yeah, graphic design queen there over there. Slab serif. Slab serif. But of course, I mean, we, listeners, you've heard us talk about this episode before. But the iconic episode for me is the Tia and Tamara, Tia and Tamara. episode, mm. where one of them, one a lizard turns into one of them, and then the girl has to decide which one is her friend and which one's the lizard. Oh my God. Like who's become. A Maori sister, like talk, and the the talking. You know, no, it's yes. me. Shoot him! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then oh, wow. she, she has to shoot one of them with water. And guess what? She shoots. You find out the wrong one. Oh my god! And Wait, but it ends. Why with, does it? Why does water kill the real one? It's, it's something not that will never they get did not world build enough. Right. It was it a signs type thing. It will never yeah. get answered. They had twenty. They had twenty three. Well, wait. Was are you afraid of the dark? Did they have like three stories in each episode, or was it, it full episode? I think it was full. I one. thought it was full. Yeah, full the first story anthology. The first anthology series. I mean, that Tia Thank and you, Tamara, uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark, was a precursor to everything Ryan Murphy is doing. Oh, now. that's God, a bold yeah. claim. Bold claim. I claim it boldly. Uh, also, but- I just, like, I remember being just jealous of the bumper, the, the idea that, like, these kids kind of know each other and they all just like meet in the woods yeah. and it's like it's it all crazy. worked out with no cell phones and yeah. they're all wowed yeah. out. Like, this is cool. Is there a sexual energy here? Like, what, what happens? <laughs> right. you know, this is- oh, you're finally here. This yeah. spot in the woods. Uh, yeah. It's been late sitting on the night. rock for like a real long time and I'm, boy, is my behind Birkin. <laughs> you know, the rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we throw sand onto the, the fire. And the sand was always oh. the sexiest part. Mm-hmm. I don't, am I talking? Oh I, am yeah, I making sense? yeah. They, they would throw put, the sand on the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. snuff it. They would snuff it. it. They would snuff it. That's what. It, I the, forgot the, the about sand. the frame. I totally forgot about. Yeah, the yeah, frame. yeah. It's it's a sexy frame. But yeah, those yeah. kids. Those kids had something. Man, what that was it? it? Um, did you watch the Goosebumps TV show? I watched the original. The official. Yes, the that, original. That I think TV made show. me realize it was like after I'd kind of settled on the books, but they were doing one to one adaptations right. of the series I'd read. But I remember realizing I'd gotten better. at reading. <laughs> uh, I remember realizing like, oh, these books must be pretty thin if they can get everything in one app. Sure. <laughs> like it wasn't yeah. like, well, we're the first book will be the first season we're yeah, thinking. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, each, yeah. it was just like, yep, yeah, that was it. That was that. There were two turns. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I've never thought about that. Like good feeling that comes with like watch seeing your books in a row. Oh my God. Oh, like it's I, gorgeous. I, I don't even, I didn't even realize I was doing this, but I do it with Harry Potter too. I like line them all up and yeah, but it bothers ima- me to, to this day. Imagine that my 70 first of one, those. Sorry, I know, no. I know I, I can totally, un- I can feel that in my that body, like how good that big. probably yeah. feels, but it bothers me so much that my Sorcerer's Stone is a paperback. Yeah. You need and the matching. rest of them are hardcover. Yeah. I yeah. need to go buy the you know, hardcover. There, now that you're a successful adult, <laughs> Man right. with a wildly successful podcast <laughs> empire. There is this company, uh, and I'm sorry to not plug it correctly. I'd, I'd gotten a gift from my girlfriend. Uh, they, they basically, they will take any book you want. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, shit. And they will make a custom, like, uh, binding and uh, a cover for it that you can have, like, for your, like, uh, like art that goes across all the books. So, oh, like, gorgeous. Fantastic. My girlfriend and I, she especially loves the, like, Elena Ferrante novels. Uh, and, like, they they have only ever been out in paperback in English, but, like, this company made hardcover versions hardcover of them. Elena Ferrante. And, and, and then made, like, a, a cover that, like, sits, it's almost like an <gasps> art piece that sits in your shelf. That. And, like, one image goes across and they do, like, custom. Ooh, that's not wild. Like, like, an uh, ASMR yes. type thing, oh, too. Sure. And, like, oh, my, the catalog, it's worth it just to get the catalog in the mail because they, like, obviously have these demo wall bookshelves oh, that are like hell yeah all the classics but like all in like sepia with the same fonts <laughs> and just like batches of images across five so it just feels like looking at this like mural with your books it's so I'm rock horny. hard rock yeah. hard <laughs> i'm rock hard promo code kara <laughs> that's it okay wait i have wait, we need to talk about goosebumps more was it was <laughs> it um no this is huge for me this is huge for me max because the series was very good at the series was a Fox. It was Fox. I, like was, I Fox. was in Canada. It was YTV for for a minute because uh, that's, yes. that's where I watched it. But um, the haunted mask adaptation was yeah. masterful because the mask that they got. So it's basically this: they get this mask, they put it on. It's haunted. It's crazy. It, it has it does crazy, crazy things to the kids. Well, it turns the kid evil. Yeah. Oh my and god! And the mask they got for it was truly like 
a, like, oh, yeah. Emmy worthy props. Wait, was it like a large mask? Green. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. I remember okay, see, this. It's art. like Green Goblin style. It was like yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, the art, like the art, is very evocative. Like I would show you a picture and you would be like, oh my god, yes, this is coming. I think back I also right. remember reading, and this could be apocryphal, and Arl Stein's on Twitter. I'm sure he can correct <laughs> this. Uh, that. For a lot of like that series, he would come up with the title uh-huh. and the cover image before and reverse engineer it from there. Mm. You know, like just this idea of like, uh, you know, uh, the boy with the, you know, wasp in his brain or whatever. That's yeah, not yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, and then yeah. just have like an image of like wasp eyes or something sure, sure, and then sure, like sure, be sure. like, okay, I can imagine that like a kid's at camp and he gets, you know, right. whatever. Like, uh, and I was just always very impressed by the business, the business side, side of that, of that. I was just, like, uh, you yeah, gotta pump them out. Wow, but I because sometimes I'm gonna say something. Sometimes the content of the books didn't live up to the art. To the I mean, it art. can't possibly, especially <laughs> when that idea comes first. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And I, I will say that like part of this collector thing at birthed in me was like the object, the physical object, and the hunt yes. was as important to me in my fandom as the content. You yes, know, like I, yes. I. I, I in middle school and early high school, I got really into like Star Wars novels, uh-huh. like the expanded universe wow, before yeah, all yeah, the prequels. Yeah. Are and those stuff. canon for you? You know, I, I that's another fandom. I like pulled my foot off the the like I'll see the movies, but I'm not like, well, I've got to delete Thrawn out of my database. <laughs> like I, I live in a very casual way with that now. But I liked um, I liked holding them. I liked yeah. the look of like okay, this yeah. trilogy and this like mm. that. Even if the book was weird, I still was like, well, I still am going to read it all. I'm still going to put it on the shelf. Right, like right, I yeah, liked. Yeah. Finding it and having it as much as you know. Wow, I was really hard. So no Star hearts, Wars. No like Got I was it. like on the Star Wars website. So it's very kind of, and I, I know all about the novels that extended the universe and everything. Yeah. So it's hard to see the movies now because they've literally thrown that all so out, much, which is yeah, very yeah. confusing. Yeah, mm. and I liked some of the choices they had made. Yeah, back then. Me like too. Luke and his, yeah, all that. The kids. Yeah, the kids were great. The, yeah, twins, Jaden and whatever. right. Yes, Jaden and whatever. Yeah, and now it's <laughs> like in in um. My God, what was the name of the last movie? Last Jedi. Last Jedi. You spoiler alert for people who haven't seen the Last Jedi. You find out that Ray has no familial connection to yeah, yeah. the Skywalkers at yeah. all, which is I guess was like their big reveal. Just so antiquated. Well, it's very, it's like, very. Uh, not that fun. It's uh, the big sci-fi eighth grade. All our stories are important, and the point <laughs> is, you shouldn't just you should you shouldn't judge your own story if it doesn't match up to. The ones on the big screen. It's Boy, true. Bo Burnham, what's up? At me, follow me. That was Hi, the Bo. fucking best movie. I still haven't seen it. Oh, what? God. And we oh, and he was a great interview at Vulture Fest. He was so nice. He was a sweetheart. So sweet. Have you met him? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know him a little bit. I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Know Wait, oh no. I, Wait, I, I did want to ask, ask you. I want to ask ha, really quickly, have you met our All-Star? That's what was my question uh, okay, was great, too. Great, great. No, no, I have not. What? He is at UCB. He's at UCB all really? the time. He has yeah. done the monologues for Ask Hat, I think, a couple times. Like he, One time he did that show he did Night, Night Late, Late which is like they, they do a monthly uh, late night show with a different right, host. Right, 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 right. I've been there. I've been at UCB like several times when he's like rolling through and they're like preparing the green room and everything. Like RL is a... He's a little comedy UCB performer. Stan, yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's a th- like all, all the more power to him, and I'm sure that would be delightful to yeah. meet him or see him on that stage. He's someone that like I liked. I liked the lack of access I yes. had to his persona, his process. Right. I just was like, oh, you're a spooky man that just like, where did these ideas come from? I bet you live in a weird like main Stephen King scary yeah, thing yeah. and just like, I don't know, my fingers won't stop typing. Yeah. And then to have him just be like, you know, follow me on MySpace and like I'm doing a meet and greet and like uh, yeah. very out and about like people that like are into knowing, Beverly Cleary is not who I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> who's there's like um, Judy, Judy Bloom. <laughs> Judy Bloom, that she's like on Twitter and like, yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah. we DM'd or whatever. I'm just like, I don't, I'm Interesting. J.K. Like Rowling, too. She interacts. I know. But R.L. Stein, Put though, a statement out. Speaking about statements about who's gay and who's not. Big oh, statement. God. I, uh, every spec pilot I've ever written, I uh, years later sent all the production companies that had gone out to uh, a statement about who's gay and who's not. <laughs> just to way. let you know. <laughs> Everyone you thought was gay wasn't. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, ones yeah. that... Yeah. I know this never went beyond the second draft and our meeting didn't go great, but i just like you to know that those te- two characters, yeah, they do end up getting married. They were gay. Yeah. There, there was a great click hole thing. Whoever wrote it, uh, click hole was like, um, cross crossing a line. J.K. Rowling has <laughs> revealed that Daenerys has Crohn's disease. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> she's like, she's like yeah. making statements about characters not Daenerys. even Daenerys. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Game yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's Crohn's disease. disease. Wait, about R.L. Stein, though? Because, okay, but he always had, so, he peeled back some layer even back in the day where at the end of each Goosebumps book, he'd be like, now, and come join the Goosebumps fan club. Like, right? Yes. Like, remember those pages? Like, those little For sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, he would always want he always he's always been this person who's like wanted to interact with the fans yeah and I think like publishing as a thing pre JK Rowling has always wanted yeah how do we get people like even more on the train totally. of like yeah I, 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 he was an early guy that had a website like yes. if there had been social media it was like please you know he like been there's a it. mailing list we'll send you a newsletter like right. yeah. you know they want that engagement I just like always had this thing of being like I don't I'm, I'm happy that. with the, yeah. the oh, books. Good. And I don't look, look, new creators, I'm, I'm down to find out more about them. I'll stalk anybody's Instagram, yeah. like a weird, like, yeah. director of a movie that I kind of like. I'd be like, oh, I want to know about, you know, his yeah. life. But right. for that stuff from childhood, I'm like, I don't, I don't need to, like, now be your peer. Sure, sure, sure. JK, That's I wouldn't so be his peer. But. interesting. <laughs> like, I never, I never, yeah, I never, I have never sought out information about JK Rowling's life. I am a Harry Potter person. Uh-huh. But, like, whenever she's, like, has an interview, like, and they're like, this is JK Rowling's story, I'm like, I know her story. Story. Her story is Harry Potter. So you don't yeah. watch the interview? No, I mean I've watched the interview, but oftentimes the one, like, the one she does with Oprah is great. I did watch the one with Oprah. Yeah, yeah. Oprah one's great. Did you like Harry Potter? You read Harry Potter? You know, I enjoyed Harry Potter. I love the um, uh, Cormoran Strike novels. Oh, what's those? Those are Robert. She wrote it under the pseudonym. Yes. Oh, yes. Right, 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 right. Like they are fantastic. Yeah. Okay. better than the casual vacancy. Uh, it's ob- like it is like truly great, great um, detective writing. Detective writing. Yeah. Like oh, in shit. a sort of pulpy, but she's like a very, very she's you know good. great, writer. great literary writer. Yeah, but they're straight for like they're mysteries, but like super well done. Very British. They're like yeah, and she like pumps them out almost. She's amazing. The first three were one a year, yeah. I think, in the midst of everything else. She's putting a play out and writing a screen. Like, yeah, she's yeah, incredible. She, it's amazing. really like there's some writing in the Harry Potter books that is stunning. Like, oh, like yeah. when when um when he di- when he dies and the he's ghost in King of Frost. his sm- the ghost of his last laugh still on his face. Oh, when Fred oh. Fred Weasley dies, and then um just like the whole imagery around Cedric dying, like how sudden that felt, and like that that just felt like she's good the whole chapter uh, where he's where he where he's dead at king's cross oh yeah with dumbledore like do, do you perfectly match up with what? the yeah, my he, girlfriend's sister who is the biggest harry potter so was my girlfriend but the sister is the exact age I do. Each year I was actually, like, I do perfectly match up. You do. With, I never even thought of that. I was yeah. like, oh my god, that must have been unbelievable to get that book every mm-hmm. August or whatever. Legitimately, and start seventh grade. Legitimately, yeah. I, did you read it as they came out? Yeah, grew up with them. But we like, wow. that one was so. That's what was so weird about it is it was like when that when the tone of the books changed, I almost didn't notice right. because my kind of changing, yeah. perception of 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 like the dramatic stakes was also changing. Like I felt like, and then you read them back, and that first book is genuinely written at a different reading level. Totally. Oh, well, yeah. well, but like they matched up for us towards the end because the last one came out when we were seniors in high school. I think that you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because the first one I read in fourth grade, yeah, and yeah, that yeah, would have yeah. I would have been a little bit younger. Than totally. That. So they ended up matching towards the end, and then like when the movies first came out, that's when they matched. And it was it's, it was a weird when they cast thing. the kids as the actors, right? they were the same. They age were the same age as us, wow. and it was crazy. And I remember reading a bre- reading like a casting breakdown or whatever. It was like only. Uh, looking, I don't know why this is coming out in a British accent. Only looking for British actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was like heartbreaking. And my dad said <laughs> yeah. to me, "You know what? If you worked hard enough, you could be Harry Potter." <laughs> I was like, "I don't think they're checking for me, Dad." Yeah, yeah. He's like, wow. "No, if you worked hard enough and yeah. you put your mind to it, you would be Harry Potter." Mm. These casting guys—they're on your side. <laughs> All they want to do is find a good tape. That's now, what they live for. Exactly. They—they they don't know what they want until they see yeah. it. <laughs> Uh, but wait, now I do want it. Before we got on, before we started the pod, we were having a really good conversation, you guys, about Mr. Holland's opus. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I want to share one thing. Well, one thing is my dad, we were watching Mr. Holland's opus, and there's the character of Rowena, who is the teen girl that yeah. Mr. Holland almost fucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He fully, and then he encourages her to move Classic away to New York. second act temptation of being like, you're a man with a kid and a yes. wife and responsibilities yeah. and just, but you got this student. Yeah. He's just like, I mean, she's got something in her eyes. I mean, there's a spark Named there. Rowena. Rowena. <laughs> and when she left the town, my dad had a classic line, which I only just recalled in this conversation before, which was, well, let me tell you something. I don't think she makes it because I don't know anybody out there named Rowena. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, um, like, like, is does he mean, and he could mean both, um, Make it. that if the <laughs> character had 
made it, she'd be famous. Be like, oh my God, this is Absolutely. Rowena yeah, yeah. from... Is, yes. Or that she, <laughs> in some weird time loop, she... the. <laughs> The character makes it so big that people are now naming their children after <laughs> right. the fictional. It's a weird world within a world. <laughs> I don't know where his mind was existing at the time. I just remember he was like, "Well, she shouldn't have done that because let me tell you something. She didn't make it. We don't hear anyone named Rowena. Oh. Like as if she was supposed to be like a share Madonna type." That is no. That's a classic Rich Rogers. I quote. cannot work out the logic of that. This is. I'm sure you guys don't watch this. Uh, I very much love the show Bosch, uh, and it's based on these novels named Bosch. Uh huh. But in the novels originally. The character of Bosch is rich because there was a Bosch TV uh-huh. show based on a case of no. his. <laughs> right. So the TV show starts and he's got a Bosch poster in his house, and you're kind of like, okay, so there's a different Bosch TV show in the TV universe. Yeah. Okay, I get it. But another weird thing about the novels, and they've sold, you know, 100 million copies, is the Lincoln lawyer is oh. the half brother of Bosch. It's what? written by the same author. They also made a movie of the Lincoln lawyer with Matthew McConaughey. Uh, yes, right, I remember right. that. And they I, they do overlap in some of the novels, I guess. I haven't read those. But in a recent Bosch book, uh-huh. I'm reading the book, which is narrated by the actor who plays Bosch. It's oh, an audio book. <laughs> so he calls funny. his half-brother, Mickey yeah. Holler, the Lincoln lawyer, and his half-brother answers, uh, hey, like, hey, little brother, all right, all right, all right. And then in the book, it says his brother has taken to doing a Matthew McConaughey impression after they made a movie based on him starring Matthew McConaughey. So, like, in now the universe yeah. of the Bosch novels, they there's the real Matthew McConaughey yep, movie, but yeah. it's nonfiction. Yeah. It's nonfiction, <laughs> and there's a Bosch TV show that's not this. It's like... And that, friends, so is a Mobius many, strip. <laughs> yeah. and that's no, a true Mobius strip. And you know strip. what that is also? It's in the Oceans franchise now, where there's right. Julia Roberts exists in the Oceans universe, but Anne Hathaway doesn't. Right. But, but then, meanwhile, fucking Daphne Kluger does. But then it's all... Oh, my Wait, God. Okay, so you're saying, because I haven't seen all the Oceans movies, Julia Roberts, the actress, exists in the Oceans universe. Yes. yes. And Julia Roberts plays a character. The big twist yes. of the, the second movie is they keep referencing, talking about, I think her name is Trish or something. Tess, like, Tess, Tess you're going to pose as Julia Roberts. But, but like, they keep saying under the breath being that. like, you know, what we could do, because Tess does, and everyone keeps being like, she's not going to do it. No. And then they finally are like, will you? And they and you're like, they must not be talking about this. And then it's like, it's they are. So Julia, weird. Julia, like Bruce Willis plays himself oh, and like gives her a hug. God. It's like a whole. But because she happens to be her identical stranger. It's like, it's so. Because in any other movie where there are real celebrities in there, you can like make some logical. You can, you can suspend some disbelief and say, oh, oh yeah. well. Every other celebrity except the, the actors who are playing these people exist in this world. Right, right. The only but thing that would have made Ocean's 8 better is if Anne Daphne Hathaway Kluger was played, played Anne, Anne Hathaway. Hathaway. <laughs> That's true. I think it would have made it so much funnier. And I, I already think that movie was great and huge and amazing for her. Like, I think I think the public narrative on Anne Hathaway right now is, like, so positive, which yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, down yeah. for because I like Anne Hathaway. Yeah, she yeah, also yeah. got to play the... I've only seen half the movie, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Two-thirds of it. Um, what the heck? Uh, but she gets to play... She gets to make fun of totally with, yes. without having to be literal about it. She's yeah. not so indulgent that she's playing Anne Hathaway as a big buffoon or yeah. or whatever public image she's playing this like right. fake version. Of it's her. perfect. I think the way that the character was co- conceived and presented and performed would have been such a funny co- comment on Anne Hathaway. Totally, totally. I just think it's a if little it bit of a missed opportuniety. Soderbergh would have taken that swing. I the think, director of Ocean's yeah. Eight was a little uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, Gary, uh, Gary, uh, Gary Ross, Cooper, Ross, Gary He's Ross, like, Gary Ross, yeah. It's the Hunger Games guy. Hunger Games. Yes, the Hunger Games guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many carrots is it? Enough. Enough. (laughs) Very good. It's towards the end. Delicious. Very good. Um, Wait, we were having this conversation about movies that unfailingly make us cry. Right. I I was saying that Mr. Holland's Opus is one of two films that has a scene that I can access anytime and like make myself overcome. And it's not a movie that I'm like, well, it's the most important movie to me or the. Right, right, right. It's my two. Your tool. Yes, we're. Mr. Like, like to win a fight with my girlfriend, you know, yep. like a tool. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Hans Opus, when he uh, he discovers that his retirement ceremony is actually the first performance of yes. his American uh-huh. Symphony, uh, and he stands and the curtain raises, and it's all his former students, grown up, yeah. and he he chokes up Richard Dreyfus. Yes, uh, good performance, <laughs> Oscar nominee. And then Forrest Gump, when uh, at the end he meets Haley Joel Osment, and he asks mm. Robin Wright, um, "Is he smart or is he?" Stupid, like, and she's like, he's one of the smartest boys in his class. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. I'll say mine. Okay. Is the culmination of Big Fish Mm -hmm. when (laughs) the father is dying. Yeah. And the son has to tell him a story. Yes. And basically, he just reveals that, like, 
they had this great adventure to take him back to the river. And then when they get to the river to put the father in the water so that he can be the big fish, um, all his family and friends had were there waiting for him and cheering. And none of them were sad. They were all so happy to see you. Oh my God. And just the music, I could think of it at any oh, time. Yeah. Just, if I want to, cry uh-huh. <laughs> yeah you can find me in my room listening to the big fish wow. soundtrack so a question about that because i don't remember that scene perfectly is anyone on camera crying no because that's my oh. big thing like I, if a not that any time i watch someone cry i cry but like in those two movies mm-hmm. it is like the first time you see those characters like yeah buckle right and like i was at a wedding this weekend and like looking at an aunt i've never met start to cry during vows will right. like <laughs> kick into oh, me like yeah. uh, it's like laughter but getting laughter like i yes. get very social about it so it's interesting that your big fish has well, to be honest with you crying. they weren't crying but they were very emotional sure yes, yes. you know what yes. i mean and i think there's a shot there's a shot of helena bonham carter and she's like crying out of happiness and i'm yes. just like oh and i honestly i'll tell you what it what what's doing it for me there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the thing i that i'm like keying into is the um father son thing oh yeah. got it yep also have you ever seen the movie i often talk about this movie um oh my god why am i not able to think of it, it? kira sedgwick robert downey jr uh, uh, uh sorry sorry um oh my god ooh. oh my god, god heart fuck. and soul heart, heart and soul no i've never seen it Heart and Souls is one of the like sudsiest, like soapy kind of movies. It's like literally, it's Alfre Woodard, um, Tom Sizemore, ra- uh, uh, ooh, 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 Kira Sedgwick, and it's some other actor. Okay, so what's, from what's that the, guy what's from Beethoven? Scene? What's the scene? This it's just the movie in general is like they they're in a bus accident uh-huh. and they die and their souls are latched onto a young child Robert Downey Jr. and oh, he wow. starts to see them around him. Oh wait, so this is super young Robert Downey Jr. So, no, well, but he's it's like, a child playing Robert I, Downey I, Jr. I and then this this the parents start to realize that their kid's like a little fucked up because he sees these ghosts, but they can't see him, right. them. So he is all, he's all weird and the parents like get divorced and it's horrible. And so he's souls, got a whole crew of ghosts. He's got a crew of ghosts that are Sounds like familiar. attached to him and they don't know why. And so they, one day say, we're kind of ruining this kid's life. We have to leave him. And so they make a conscious decision to all at one time, tell him we're going to leave you. Mm. And they're his best friends. Aww. And this is the beginning of the movie. So as they're all leaving okay. him one by one, and Alfre Woodard is the last to go. Um, oh, Alfre. Alfre is the queen. <laughs> it's actually rule of culture number 44. 40, Alfre is, is, the, is the queen. <laughs> and they all leave. And this kid, this child actor, is just crying, weeping. Okay, so there's every a, there's single a, there's time. A, there's a crying. There's one for me, but person. you need to see oh Heart God. and Souls. It also has a, uh, Elizabeth Shue, isn't it? And oh, Elizabeth oh. Shue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really, really oh good. Oh, my God. But um, And then so then ghosts go on from there? It's about the so kid. So the ghosts are then, they're able to see him. But they but can't he can't. Him. So they oh. essentially grow up with him. Oh my or they don't god. grow up with him. They're there as themselves, but he grows up into Robert Downey Jr. and becomes like a douche. Oh my god. And so then they appear powerless. to him again mm-hmm. because they realize they need him to help them do their unfinished business. Oh, wow. for sure. And then the movie gets going. Then it's a missions. really good movie, oh, you guys. Great, great, great. It's really good. And it's like weepy and like early 90s, like when they used to make Ugh. movies like this. But Robert Downey Jr. is so good. There's a lot of good scenes of like the um, ghost taking over his body uh, so he'll like take on the characteristics of like Hira and Alfre and mm-hmm, Tom mm-hmm. Sizemore who's like oh, crazy such a bummer yeah. that if they were if they were going to make that now it would have to be faith based like you it just, would you just can't, there's, yeah. you know, it would have yeah, to be like you know yeah. Catherine Hagel and like another TV <laughs> actor and it would just be like why is it all the scenes in the daytime oh, and like yeah 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 <laughs> ugh, people would they'd make it more complicated than <laughs> yeah. it has to be all the scenes are enjoy the are movie as it exists time. in the vacuum that it currently exists is my recommendation wow. do you have one of those movies Bowen that's a weepy one for you yeah but they're, they're and but we were saying this before off off mic that it, it's they're not prestige films. No, no they're not. No, they're they're minor, but my, yes, but mine are so so basic, and it's fine. But without fail, and I did this before a scene where I had to cry. Oh, wow. Um, the fucking this like wh- when is this is what got you there on high maintenance. This is this was high maintenance. <laughs> this was um I was literally in the kitchen. I'll do it on the day. I'll do it. On the day. I know. I was like, I'll do it on the day. And then and fucking Kachi was like, What are you doing? I was like, I need to watch this clip, this part in Inside Out. Oh wow! When they're in the bottom of the pit, yeah, and I was sure. like. And then, and then it's it's Amy just like sobbing and oh being God. like, D- don't you remember like when she used to do this thing? Oh, like, and she wow, was, that gave me chills. I, and then, and oh, that part unfailingly makes me cry. And I don't cry at stuff. And then the other one is these are both Disney movies. Toy is, Story two. No, Toy Story never really. 
Toy Story, Story 2. When she loved me. Yeah, when, me. when she loved me was That's great. Me. But uh, Mulan at the end where she brings the sword and the metal. She's like, father, I brought you back this. And then he takes it, doesn't even look at it, throws it throws it to oh. the side. Hugs her. God, parent stuff gets me. Right? Par- it, it's yeah, and that's yeah. a parent stuff too. That's a, that's a parent thing too. And then the inside out thing is a childhood thing. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 all it's it's that. That's what I'm working with. Oh my god, very good ones. But they're both Orange. like both like super like yeah blockbuster Disney movies. Right. I mean to go, to be honest with you, the, those prestige movies that are that are that would make me cry, they just kind of sit in my gut and make me very. They're upset. heavy. Like Brokeback they weigh you Mountain, down. I just like sit with in my despair. Yeah, yeah you you walk out hurt. like stunned or whatever. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think Hollywood. It's a criticism of them, but they are like they are willfully taking like narrative coding steps to manipulate you in yeah. a way that I think artsy auteur people are like, well, I'm yeah. not going to do that. I'm not going to like have swelling music. I'm not going to zoom in on a trembling lip. I'm going to play it truthful right, right, or cut right. away or let you think about it. Yeah. It's like, sure, do that. But like the manipulation works, works for that. Yeah. If you yeah. want to get people like yeah. tissues, you know. Also, it's a movie. And whenever people are like, oh, look at this. And it's like, yeah, it's a movie. Like people, like the early reviews of A Star is Born, they're like, it's a little like treacly at times. I'm like, yeah, yeah. because it's a melodrama. Yeah. Like and it's a, it's a, it's a musical. And it's a reboot and it's, it's, all, it's a bunch of things. It can't and be I like- will weep at that movie and the way that I will get my spirits back up is I will binge Big Mouth season two. Yes. October which will 5th. be premiering just minutes after we get home, I'm sure. Oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, you know, listen to it on the drive. Well, Truly. Oh, yeah, in, yeah. The yeah. in the footwell. Yeah. In the footwell. In the footwell. It's, it's, right. a, it's not even a visual medium television. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cartoons, I mean, it's just, you, come on. They all look the same every frame. Yeah. Yeah. Needlessly. Yeah. Needlessly. <laughs> um, all right, is it time? I think it's time. It's oh, time shit. for I Don't Think So, honey. I'm so nervous. This is our segment. Oh, don't be. Oh, Max, we we kind of know what Max's is, but it's going to be great. It's going to be it's one, one, one for the books. I have a concept, but and I don't know what I'll say, but I know how I feel. Okay. I don't know my words, but I do know my heart. I don't know my words, but I do my do know my heart. Okay, great. Um, this is Matt Rogers' I don't think so, honey. His time starts now. I don't think so, honey, Robin Wright. Oh. Because I could smell it on you. Yeah. I could smell wow. the Kevin Spacey apologism on mm. you. When you said you didn't really know him when they asked you, you worked with him every single day. And now you're saying he deserves a second chance. Oh, no, wow. Kevin Spacey wow. does not deserve a second chance, mm-hmm. Robin Wright. Mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm, sorry. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't think so, honey. I'm going to come for your performance as well. Ah! <laughs> you kind of been doing the same thing for five seasons. Oh, huh? wow, 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 You're wow. very good at sitting stone-faced and receiving seconds. information coldly. <laughs> you are one of the best in the biz, but honey, nah. Also, look, you're not doing much more to... Lift the material up from where it's been for the past three seasons, which is not that good. Fifteen seconds. House of Cards. I don't think so, honey. You died with Bo Willeman. I am absolutely not watching this last season. Now that you've said what you said, I don't think so, Five honey. Seconds. Please tell victims of assault that they are not as worthy as Kevin Spacey of a second chance. And that is one. Wow. Their lives are ruined. Wow. It doesn't matter. Wow! 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 wow. I could. Whew. I could smell it on her. Oh my god! For months before it came, this like th- her thing of her saying, "I think everyone." One can be rehabilitated and should be given a second. Well, chance. that was your first. I red could flag. smell. Yeah, did her, she, she she said no, that. She, to, she oh, did not. She it. she was very tight lipped about the whole thing and never came out with a statement. And then she got a lot of praise for like being the one to spearhead the fact that like the show was going to continue. People were going to lose their jobs. But she could have done all that and said all that without saying. Kevin that Kevin Spacey this. can be rehabilitated and deserve a second chance. Totally. Go ahead and think that on your own time. Don't make a public statement about it. Absolutely. Honey. Honey. Don't bring that opinion to the table at the cellar. No, oh come my on. God. <laughs> and you you know that Robin Wright has been trying to get... Robin's been trying to go up. She's been trying to do a set She's been trying cellar. to go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. No that, phones. That was, no and, phones. And no just phones. Because, just because we gave you a little bit of props for being part of a scene that tugs at the ear the, the tear ducts of one Max Silvestri does not yes. mean you're getting off scot free no. in this episode of Las Coderies that's Robin you're Wright. just a tool Robin wrong you're just a tool to Max somebody said somebody tweeted how about Robin, Robin wrong. wrong and I was like I mean I don't think so honey that tweet yeah, yeah. but but they, they weren't wrong they, yeah, weren't, yeah, yeah. they weren't wrong in that tweet okay. I was a fan of her early work on the show no She's not growing and changing Never and watched I mean I'll game. watch the new season but like mm. you think you will you're gonna watch it I and I'm genuinely curious to see because it's not that far away. Yeah. And it will be the first mass product with like mass money behind it that is trying to, yeah. you know, it, it's not going to be a poochy thing. It's not going to be like minute one. They're just like, 
the bus just hit him and then they just <laughs> yeah. don't talk it's about gonna it. Be it's big. it's going to somehow be enmeshed in it. And like, yeah. not that I think that show is pitch perfect. I've always found it very like bingeable. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, how are you? How are you guys going to try to stick this landing? Like putting aside, oh, we're trying to save jobs or it was all right. It was her story anyway. Mm. I'm very curious and how people accept like I'm. I'm The rationale. I don't want to just read the headline. Yeah. yeah. You want to see it. Dismissing so far it's just it. Spin, yes. You know, so I, and I so often have just, it's been easy to just be like, well, I didn't care about that person's work, so I don't need context on the bad thing right, they did. Right, I'm happy yeah. to right. put them in a bucket. Um, but this, I'm just like, how are you going to do it? Prediction. Car bomb. Oh. Ooh. But there's, see, I think there's no way, I think it's like gun in the mouth. I think there's no way that they can mm. make the character a hero without like awkwardly, if they make him a martyr in the show, it's gonna conflate yeah. mourning yeah, yeah, Kevin yeah. Spacey, Kevin Spacey's character with mourning Kevin Spacey, the actor's career. It's or weird. Like, oh, like it's wow. gonna have to be like something terrible comes out like murder Suey or right, whatever yeah, yeah. and just mm. like everyone try to, like I think they're gonna do a meta swing where it's like them trying to cover up sure. what he did to just like keep yeah. the country. I don't know. But That's me being optimistic about it. It's a huge okay opportunity. Show. Yeah. <laughs> huge opportunity to kill the man. To Yeah. To figure out the way. Anyway, Robin without, Wright. Without lying. I mean, I think I, we, they, there's those scenes in movies where uh, someone's on top of the train and then they look up and their head gets snapped off. Right. right. There's Love like, that. Right, right. Like, I think, I think you could have a sort of satisfying Dennis Hopper, Phil Seymour Hoffman, just take the top of the head sure, off. Sure. Do you think with that crazy accent he does, it would feel right for an anvil to come follow him? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that actually would feel wow. right. Wow. He's, yeah. do, he's doing I'll barbershop. See, see. He's doing barbershop quartet <laughs> at like a reunion of the military academy, God. and like the anchor on top of the school, like yeah. kills him. Yeah, he is just y Yosemite Sam. Like, he is. Why did we? Yeah. Anyway, okay. This is Bowen Yang's. I don't think so, honey. His time starts now. I don't think so, honey. Joe Biden. Oh uh, shit! You know what? All these tapes are coming out what? from 1991 during oh, the Anita, Anita Hill, Hill right? during the Anita Hill stuff, and I didn't, I didn't follow this mm -hmm. obviously because it wasn't, but like. He's asking her some like bullshit questions and like he was supposedly the good guy on the judiciary committee back then and like that because then like Maddo did this thing last night where she like cuts between him and Arlen Specter and Arlen's a full monster and yeah. he's he's being awful. But then like 30 seconds. But then you Google old if you Google Joe Biden old photos, you see like the the ones where everyone's like, oh, swoon, Joe Biden is bae. But then there are the ones where he's just has some shit eating grin next mm. to Clarence Thomas. Like, whatever. Like, it's just, I don't know. Joe's Joe's great. Sudie's going to kill me when she hears this. Who cares? Delaware and Sudie Green. But um, if she stands for Joe Biden in the election, I'm going to freak out. Continue. God. But like, I don't know. Like, it's all the Sunita Hill stuff is like really upsetting Five me. Seconds. And like, Oh my God! If you go, if, everyone should read her uh, op-ed today in the New York Times. It's fantastic. And that's one minute. Wow. You know, Damn. this definitely doesn't help him. Yeah, it's not a good yeah. look. It's not cute stuff. That's coming yeah. I don't out. think he survives. No, you know, yeah, uh, correctly like critical rethinking of like uh, the the buddy buddy like we're yeah. all different sides of the same. You know, no. like it was it was slimy and collegiate and like you put up and smiled at a lot of gross stuff yeah, in a way then, that like maybe you thought you didn't have to totally. judge it. But guess what? Now yeah, and then no, you, I mean, and then you help you. and then you let through some fucking sexual assailant into the Supreme Court already. Did you see confirmation the HBO movie with Kerry Washington no, where she plays now? Anita but Hill? literally today after after I read this Anita Hill thing, I was like, I have to watch. Everyone should watch that movie. It's a she really was, good did, reminder. Did, did she win an Emmy for that? Or no, she was nominated. She did not. She was nominated. She was nom yeah. But you know who else is in it? Jennifer Hudson. Love. As the woman who also was uh, allegedly assaulted by Clarence yes, Thomas. Yes, or yes. he made advances on and they don't allow her to <gasps> testify, which people also don't understand is that there was more than one woman yes. that was willing to come forward right. and they kept her in a room and told her you're going to testify and Whoa. hours and hours and hours went by. Watch the movie. Wow. Jennifer Hudson plays that character. Uh. I forget who plays Biden. But um, Greg Kinnear. No, yeah, Greg Kinnear. I think you might be right. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Kinnear um, books. Kinnear books. <laughs> Section yeah. rule of culture number one hundred and three. Yeah. Kinnear, Kinnear books. <laughs> okay, it's time for Max Silvestri's. I don't think so, honey. I'm very excited. This is gonna be really good. Um, okay, okay, go. Oh, the, no, no, no. This is Matt. You call it off. This is Max Silvestri's. I don't think so, honey. And his time starts now. I don't think so, honey. Honey, oh! you taste weird. You are annoying sugar. You are sugar that refuses to own a TV. You are sugar on rollerblades trying to explain to a group of girls at a party what Inception was about. Oh, no! Congrats. You oh, figured out God. how to make tea worse. You are bumblebee shit. You answer the question, what oh, would it taste God. like to felch maple syrup out of Jeff Goldblum in the fly? Oh! 
Also, I don't think so, honey. You are not healthy. That is some debunked <laughs> 80s Newsweek cover story Snackwell shit. You are for people on a diet seconds. who also move their lips when they read. Wow. You are agave for British grandmas with wow. dementia. Fuck. You are sweetener for basic people. How <laughs> dare you get served at a restaurant? You are brie <laughs> cheese. Seconds. You are sun-dried tomatoes. You are spinach-flavored wraps. You are what? an egg white omelet with a scoop of cottage cheese in the middle. You're a sticky thigh master covered in flies. Five oh, you make God. kids look at Winnie the Pooh's asshole. I don't think so, honey. <laughs> and that's, that's one minute, minute, and it's gotta be one of the best one ones One of ever the had. best ever. You know what? You are single-handedly changing the way we attack we <laughs> attack this on the podcast. We have to come in with with good ones from now on. We do. I because this we, was a sleigh. This was a sleigh. And I can tell you know it was a sleigh. I can see it in your eyes. Max, you're proud. The athlete is coming <sighs> out. Yes. I'm like trying to catch my breath. You look, feeling... like <laughs> you look, you like, look Serena. like Serena. You look like Serena. <laughs> but victorious. I don't shoot to win. I'd rather lose. Oh. Max Silvestri. Max Silvestri. Wow. Thanks, guys. That was Ooh. a sleigh. That was amazing. But I will say this. I like honey. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> I mean, that was not, this is not me. <laughs> I just wanted to be clear that this was not like a meta joke writing exercise no, where I was like, real. I don't think so, honey, no, honey. You don't how like can honey. I? You I don't like honey. Hate honey. It's and ruined, you know like, ru like I've lost uh, security dis deposits in more than one apartment because of some <laughs> shitty thing of honey I bought oh, for a recipe no. that fell over on the pantry oh. that, like, takes the pain out. Like, it is always annoying to me. Wow. No. I never thought about what it can do to a home. Yeah. Clover honey, the, the whatever plain honey is bullshit. I understand everyone's res Max's reservations with honey. Manuka honey from New Zealand. It's 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 not from a comb. It's from the manuka flower. It's still bubble. How do you shit. eat it? Okay, I eat literally eat it from a spoon. You're wow. disgusting. No, because not because I like the taste. There are kids that listen to this. Not because I like the taste, but because a lot of kids. <laughs> Literally, I've been getting sick all year, like once a month. You really have. Any time over the summer when I felt a, a tickle in my throat, would take a scoop of manuka honey, and the next day would feel fine. It's just, it's medicinal. It's not homeopathic. It's not any of that bullshit. But it's like, oh, this is. There's just like literal antibiotics. Soothing. It's soothing. No, it's not even that. It's like there's there's stuff. There's in stuff it. in it because it's a lot. Because manuka is like alive. It's flower. Exactly. Or it's some sort of right. Exactly. See, for, like it also tastes like me to being forced to drink lemon honey, <laughs> like when I was. Like a sick child. as a kid, yes, just being yes, like, yes. no, no, you have to have lemon and honey, and totally. being like, stop making me drink this shit. It tastes like medicine. I I understand that, but manuka honey might be sort of not not the gateway, but an exception. Look, manuka I'm honey. I'm willing to. <laughs> there's so much to explore. There's so much. To willing, explore. I'm willing to open my mind. Okay, you know, good. Thank you, yeah. Max. I just open don't your mouth and open your mind. <laughs> <laughs> open your mouth and open your mind. Your big mouth, that is. Oh Woo! my god! Zing 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 zing. That was one of the goats. One of the goats. Greatest of all times. Absolutely. Thank you, Max. I was guessing at what goat meant. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really proud of myself. So, you should be so proud. You're the athletes here, guys. This is huge. Um, Max, it's this is such a pleasure. This is so And fun. You, you are guys only are... the third straight man to ever fourth. have been really? on the fourth, fourth. fourth? Uh, Tim Platt, Billy Domino, John oh. Gabris, and finally. Sorry, Max Billy, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lovely yeah. company. You guys are true, like American Canadian treasures. Wow. Um, you have the uh, most sterling reputation among peers, friends, and fans that like I have ever encountered. Nah. Uh, you, uh, people love you. And you know what? Right. We're going to have to award you. The icon. Ally of the, ally, the, ally ally of the, the year. year. <laughs> ally of the year. You take it away from, uh, who do we give it to? John Gabris. John Gabris. Sorry, Gabe. Oh. Sorry, Gabe. Um, yeah. Sorry, my long, I love Gabris, my long no, no, brother. No, no, no. no, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. Um, wow. This is fantastic. Please check out uh, his comedy lineup special on Netflix. Big Mouth on Netflix, October 5th. Yes. And um, I'm very excited to say that we're going to be ending this episode right now with, of course, a song, yes. which is the theme from A Star is Born. Ha! <laughs> Ah! And for the rest of that song, you go see the film. Go see the film. Bye. October 5th. Bye. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook.